The 4x8 alt mill CNC machine is finally here, and regardless if you've been awaiting its arrival for the past year, or you're just now hearing about it, there's five things that you definitely need to know about this budget 4x8 CNC machine before you actually end up purchasing one. By far the biggest thing is its price, $7,500, which is a lot of money, but also when you look into the space at the other options out there that are available of having a machine shipped to your house, that is incredibly cheap. If you're looking at the other options when it comes to Avid, Laguna, or ShopBot, or any others out there, they're normally starting at $10,000, and on that list goes all the way up to $20,000, and we're still kind of in the hobby industrial area. We're certainly not creeping up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars that people can spend on 4 bay machines. But that price point right now is not available anywhere else in the hobby. Certainly, you can look at your own DIY machines and start putting things together, or maybe even go buy an older machine, but when it concerns purchasing something and having it show up to your house, nothing else can touch that price point. The second thing you need to know is the size. Now, when you're getting a 4x8 machine, what that actually means is you have a cutting area of 50 inches wide by 104 inches. That 104 inches gives you plenty of space to be able to add in your tool rack for your ATC and still be able to maintain cutting a 4x8 sheet of plywood or a 49 inch by a little bit over eight foot long for MDF goods as well. That means that you can get the full capacity of your machine and your bit also has clearance to be able to cut around that type of material Material, which is a huge positive when it concerns the alt mill machines. Now speaking of alt mill machines, that is the 4x4 back there. It also comes in a 2x4 and there is a bit of a difference between the 4x4, the 4x2, and then the 4x8. The 4x4 and the 4x2 are both driven by ball screws, whereas the 4x8 is driven by ball screws on two of the axis, but it has rack and pinion gearing on the Y axis. Now that is a big departure from the first two versions and the reason they did that is to be able to get it to your house as cheaply and efficiently as possible. And it's a decision that seems CNC Labs made specifically to keep the cost down low. Now what that really means is they can't ship a eight foot long ball screw to your house. Well, I guess they could, but it would be incredibly expensive. And this entire system is meant to be able to be put together so you can still achieve your four by eight machine, but have it shipped to your house in standard boxes. Speaking of that as well, there is no upgrade path from the 4x4 or the 4x2 all the way up to the 4x8, and it's because their drive systems are different. And switching out all those components would end up resulting in just a huge amount of cost. So if you do have a 4x4 or 4x2, there is absolutely no way to upgrade to a 4x8. And the last thing on size is there have been some people asking if there's going to be a 5x10 version, and they publicly said that right now they're not developing a 5x10 version, but just like everything else with CNC Labs, if enough people ask for it, they're going to make it. The 4x8 machine is not going to be expandable to a 4x12 machine. Those sections that kind of link together are not made in a modular way that you can just kind of make it endless. So if you're somebody out there who's wanting to be able to get one of these for slabs and wanting a 12 or a 16 foot long machine, that's not in the cards right now for a 4x8 alt mill. So you can run this entire machine if you want to off 110 volt single phase power, meaning that you don't have to have 220 and you certainly don't have to have three phase power in order to run your 4x8 machine. What you do lose by that is pretty much sticking with 110 volt 80 millimeter spindle, or if you really wanted to, you definitely still could use a Makita router on it. You could 3D print a reducer to be able to accept 65 millimeter spindles or shafts and then be able to use a Makita trim router in it. I don't think that a lot of people are going to do that, but I definitely know there are some people who are going to be doing that that don't want to spend an extra one two three thousand dollars on spindles they just want to spend a hundred bucks on a little trim router but they really need the capacity of four by eight so if you pushed it you certainly could set this up in your garage and not really worry about rerunning any type of wires and just kind of run everything off of normal household plugs so number four is the ATC and we can't really mention the four by eight alt mill without mentioning the fact that the ATC is arriving very very soon it was actually supposed to be announced the same day as the four by eight alt mill but they had a few extra things that they're working on behind the scenes and they want to make sure that everything was good before they actually launched it. So that isn't going to be launched for a few more weeks. Sometime in mid-November is when they're slating right now. But we do have a few specs on it. This is going to be much more towards the traditional side of things when it concerns an ATC with a few extra upgrades. The ATC is going to be 2.2 kilowatts and it's also going to need 220 volt power. It's going to range anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000, meaning that if you're purchasing the ATC with your 4x8 alt mill, that means your price 
price is going to get bumped over $10,000. But there's also some pretty cool things with the ATC as well. They configured it so that it can specifically be run using air from a normal hobbyist air compressor, so you're not having to have a really huge industrial air compressor to be able to run your ATC system. It even has a manual tool change button where you can physically press a button and change out your ISO 20 tool holders. Those tool holders accept ER20 collets, meaning that you can use tool shaft diameter all the way up to half of an inch. I'm very interested to see if they end up eventually creating one more powerful than the 2.2 kilowatt, but I do think that it's a really good place to start. I did mention that you are going to need an air compressor in order to run this, and they said that the average air compressor needed to run this is going to run around $300, but also you need to have an air dryer. They did say that you can use one of the normal off-the-shelf dryers, uh, one of those little $100 ones, and I think that it's really cool that as they were planning out the ATC and creating it, that they created it for their current customers, knowing the kind of struggles that they're going to have to go through in order to get that up and running with all the additional stuff that you need to own. And that brings us to number five, which is just all of the stuff that you're not thinking about. Yes, it is a $7,500 machine, but once you put an ATC on it, which I certainly think that you should, and you should be using the exact brand coming from CNC Labs, not only for warranty, but also just for customer service as well to make sure that it is all a single system. Once you do that, you're well over $10,000, let's say $10,500, then taxes on top of that and then you're going to have to ship it to your house. So I'm thinking to get a full system to your house, you're probably going to be spending anywhere from eleven dollars to $12,000. On top of that, the average person for a four bay machine is going to want to have a vacuum table. And yes, you could use air weight systems to be able to cover the entire four by eight, but I do think that a lot of people are going to be looking into systems like the Black Box Hurricane, where you have to purchase an entire system for that, as well as plumb it up. So you can very easily, with all the bells and whistles ready to go, spend $15,000 dollars on this machine. So it starts off at $7,500 then easily by the end of it I think the average consumer of this is going to be in closer to $15,000. So who is this machine actually for? And I've thought about that a lot. I think that if somebody realistically wants a 4x8 machine in their shop they don't want to build a machine themselves, and they know that they need it specifically to run their small business or to be able to generate income, they're not thinking, oh, I need to go out and I need to build something or I need to buy all these kits and 3D print parts. They're looking to buy a solution for their shop, and if things don't work out, something that is still going to maintain resale value. I do know that if you pour $10,000 into this alt mill, there is no way that you're going to get $10,000 out of it, but I would be very hard pressed to think that you would get less than seven or $8,000. And that's something that a lot of people in the hobby don't really think about. A lot of these manufacturers will sell you a much smaller machine and say, hey, we have the ability to tile, and I have never tiled things in my life because I shove my machines against the wall, and once it's there, I'm not pulling it out in order to tile things around. It's just extra hoops that you have to jump through, so you end up making your project smaller. Most people can fit a 4x8 machine in their shop. If you can fit one of those little smart cars in your shop, you can fit a 4x8 machine in your shop, which is just wild to think about. I think with the introduction of the 4x8 alt mill from CNC Labs, we're going to see a lot of competitors start moving into that space as well, because I do think that they're bridging a gap that's existed for a very long time, and I cannot wait to see what happens. I'll have links to all of their blog write-ups about this machine if you want to know more details, as well as links to the 2x4, the 4x4, and then the 4x8 machines down there below. I've had the 4x4 here in the shop for over a year and I'm very excited about making my year-long review on it because there has been some really great things and some things that I've had to learn along the way as well as a few things that I'd like to see done differently on it. But the biggest thing by far is just that I wish that it was bigger and now the 4x8 is here and you can finally order it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.